Hi, Wesley. I'm Milla Austin, the communications director here at the church. We wanted to let you know that the video that you're about to watch is a condensed down version of a much longer video that we filmed between Pastor Greg and Rabbi Shai. In the 43 minute long version, Rabbi Shai gets into the philosophical and theological explanations of many of the elements of a Seder meal. While we hope that you'll watch the much shorter version when you're able to during the lunch hour, we hope that you'll also find some time to watch the much longer, about 43 minute long version so that you can learn a little bit more about what Jesus and his followers were really doing that Thursday night up in the upper room. Thank you for watching and we hope you've enjoyed all of our Lenten lunches this week. Well, welcome Wesley. We are grateful that you are here for Monday, Thursday. We're taping this early. And first, my guest, who is not new to Wesley, but Rabbi Shai, who has been with us on other occasions. As we think of Monday, Thursday, it is predicated on the proposition that this was first a meal that was an observance of Jewish rite and ritual, the Seder. And I could tell you it probably not be precise in all of the ways in which that is conducted and the power and meaning of each symbolic moment. But Rabbi Shai has graciously said, I'll do that for you. I and, will. And so I'm just looking forward to hearing from no, him. I, 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 and Rabbi Shai, you go ahead. I will go ahead. Uh, first of all, thank you to welcoming me here. And what I, when I want to make a connection, what is Passover? What is Seder? Okay. Seder in Hebrew, it's order. Okay. And we have a we are telling the story of the Exodus. Exodus from where? From Egypt to the Holy Land. But try to be with me and all of you. What is the meaning of Exodus in our life today? We can say we speak about Exodus those times. Yeah. But if I'm taking and I want to do reflection to our days today of days of COVID, mm -hmm. Are we going to be exodus from this COVID to another period in another place without COVID? What is the exodus in our day? So one of the things you're telling me about this meal is it's not simply a memory, but to be incorporated correctly, it's an experience. And what we are doing and we try the most important commandments from the Old Testimony, from the old story of the Exodus, I'm asking my congregants and my children, what is the most important thing in Passover? The matzah? No. The washing the hand? No. The hag, the shank? No. The most important thing in this night, it's to tell the story to take our legacy mm -hmm. and to bring it to our days. To, to incorporate it into the present. Exactly. Otherwise, it's just a what, museum piece. What That's we're doing right. here in our life. So let's go to the Seder. Thank you. And we can light the candles, please, with your permission. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> there oh. you go. I like it even. I catch one. There. And we are saying two blessings. One blessing that we bless, and I will say it in Hebrew, and the other is the blessing of the time. We bless the time of this event that we celebrate, and we want to remember what happened then, but in our days. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidashanu bemitzvotav vetzihivanu lehadlik ner shel yom tov. We say that we bless, that we light the candles for a good day. And Passover is a good day. Yes. And the second blessing is the, the blessing of the time, what we're calling in Hebrew, Shechayanu, that we came to this moment to celebrate. And every day, what we're saying in the morning, two words, thank you, mm -hmm. that I wake up. 
So I'm thanks to God that we are he here again. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechianu Vekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Aze Lazman Aze Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechianu Vekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Aze Lazman Aze Ah, 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 amen. We bless the God that you brought us to this time and to this moment to celebrate. Now, you have to remember that all the blessing that we're using in Judaism, it's to praise God. And we're doing it for ourselves, not for him. Right. He does not need it. We need it. Precisely. And we're doing it again and again and by this. Now, I want to take you ourselves to something in the Haggadah that you will understand. We drink during the night four cups of wine. And we have four cups of wine and one cup later for Elijah the prophet. That, that beats communion in the Methodist church. And it's it's okay peace, with me. That's all right. It's okay with me. There is no problem with this. If you will go with me to page 16. On the left, on the right page, you will see on the left side why we drink four cups of wine. Because God said to Moses, I will bring you out. Bring. It's one verb. I will deliver you. The second verb, I will redeem you, is the third one, and I will take you to be my people. In Hebrew, vehotzeti, vehitzalti, vegaalti, velakachti. And then the fifth one, and I will bring you to the Holy Land, and I will bring you to the Holy Land. It's like the future that we're saying when it will happen, to the days to come. You believe that the Messiah came when the Savior came. Mm. We do, don't believe, and because of this, we invite Elijah, that they, he is the symbol mm -hmm. of the Savior, because the prophet Micah said later, a day before they, God Almighty is going to come, I will send you the Elijah the prophet. And because of this, we invite Elijah the prophet, and it's symbolized. Right. We put wine until the end of the cup, Okay. We open the door for Elijah to come, okay. and then we are invite Elijah to come. And how you teach children that Elijah is coming, and children want to see, where is he? Uh, yeah. sure. So you move a little bit the table, and they see that the wine is moving. Oh, okay. Elijah is here. Okay. But it's symbols. Everything that we have here in the table, it's only symbols. I want to go with you. We are washing the hands okay. during the Seder because in the Jewish tradition, before you're eating a matzah, right. and matzah is a bread. It's matzah that you have here. Okay. Tradition, you have three. We put three and we cover them. Each of them represent the three levels in Judaism. Okay. It's the the Kohanim, it's the ministers, the Levites, and Israel, people like me. I'm the simple guy. I'm a rabbi, but I'm simple. As somebody said to me, it's not simple to be simple. What is the meaning of a matzah? Matzah, why are we eating this and we don't eat bread? We eat a matzah because the order that Moses gave to them make your bread very quick, mm -hmm. and this is what we got. Okay. But today in our life, you have it in all the taste and everything. Right. And this is became the symbol. We call it also in Hebrew, bread of poor people. Lechem Oni. Because it's not 
bread. It's not. Uh, it's not adorned. It's just no, simple. It's simple nourishment. Yeah, and a lot of people don't like to eat it because it's make them during seven days problem in the stomach. Mm -hmm. But it's so simple, and this became a symbol mm -hmm. today of poorness of something, but it's bring, I can say something about equalness right. between all people. You cannot have a special bread or something. This is simple. Right. Okay. So is the washing almost a washing from some of that experience? The washing, the washing in Judaism is a symbol of trying to clean. Okay. You start to bless everything with cleaning the hand. And it's also simple to clean yourself, right. first of all, COVID, whatever, sure. and health issues. And then you can say, I'm cleaning myself from the Egyptianness. Right. And nobody will take me that I have something against Egypt today. No. Egyptianness is something that is with us and we cannot let it go. Right. We're trying to let it go, but still... To clean. There is a big commandment in this special in this night, not to open only the door for Elijah, to open the door for all people. They don't have where to do a seder. That the seder will be for everyone, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have the ability to cook for the meal, and etc. etc. And most of them are Americans. No, they say they're not through the matzah. Mm -hmm. They know it through the matzah ball soup. Okay. And they think, oh, there is a matzah ball soup? Uh, got it. It's, <laughs> it's Passover. The matzah ball, the matzah ball itself, mm -hmm. it's from matzah. Okay. Yeah, that's... I, I've had it once, I recall. Yeah. And it, it, it's good, but the, the commandment, the mitzvah, the, to be a good man... It's to invite people to your table. So we spoke about four glasses. We have here in the Passover plate, we have a hard egg. The, what is the egg? Why the egg is here and not other things are here? And everything is symbols. Right. And I will tell you more than this. All of these things, God didn't say it. It's rabbis. It's decision of people before nearly 2,000 years to teach us how to remember. Now, it's a simple also to us how much you can make people to suffer. When you see that you suffer, don't give to others to suffer. And this I'm telling about our today, about, you know, we speak about what happened in, in Egypt, but then I'm saying what is the reflection to our life today? So this is the egg. The parsley, we take the parsley and we dip it in water with salt. We dip it with, and we eat it. With your permission, I will eat it. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the bitterness. All The question that I will ask you, is the bitterness only of the Egyptianness that we have, it's happened in the past? And what is the bitterness of today? Okay. So you just don't confine it to looking back, but you invite... Go, go back and forward. That's back right, and you forward, invite your past time. into your present. How many people suffering today? All this table... It's memorized the past, mm -hmm. but it's have reflection to our days today. And the Haggadah that you have here, you mm -hmm. can do it to read, go and forward and to do it. The Haroses, it's something very sweet. It symbolizes two days to come. But also when they build the pyramids, they put between the stone, and this is something that can remind us, but it's sweet, okay. sweet to the future. 
shank bones. This is the hand of God Almighty that I took the Israelite outside of Egypt. You know, when I came this morning, I saw outside there is a big sign on your That's grass right. of hope. Exactly. When we are coming to the end of the Haggadah, of telling the story, what is our hope? Mm -hmm. as, as we spoke, we bring Elijah the prophet. Right. I will bring you from Egypt to the Holy Land. This is one journey of hope. What is the hope now? How we give hopes to our children, right. to our grandchildren. How we give hope to our adult people. What is hope in our life? And what we're taking from this story to our story today? Something the first time I think I've heard today that I had not yet experienced in this meal is the open door. I hadn't realized how first important it was to appreciate this meal without also appreciating that Elisha can come through it. But also, and this was as important to me and something I'd not yet heard, the open door is also a door where we can let go of that Egyptianness. And that has to walk out in order for something else to walk through. You're totally right. I, I appreciate what you're saying. And I, I had never really thought of that. I did not real. I, I knew these elements. I knew the washing. But I had forgotten how the door is as important as every other symbol at this table. The door, if you will take... What is the door in our life? In, in the theological perspective, yeah. A door. A door is a door. Mm -hmm. You can come in. And you can yeah. go out. Yeah. But I will say, and I agree with you 100%, it's in our hand. Yeah. It's our That's decision. Right. That's right. These symbols can just do so much. And, and then it's in a, but it's up to us. What we want to learn from the story, we want to take some meaning things to our life to remember them that we did something that we want to learn. And special, with, we have two cans with the present of God Almighty. Well, thank you for this evening and, and for your sharing. Again, what we want you to know as you leave us and go to Israel again is that you go with our prayers, not only for you and for your son, but for the common faith that we share in the common God who has made us all. Thank you. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come to here, to share something, and to wish you and to your congregations, congregation to congregation, a wonderful time of holidays. Thank you. With a lot of hope right. and faith. And God will be with you. Thank you. And we will say, Amen.